Hi guys. So I'm, I've got an order in for one of my um, crystal runes that I put the stone and the copper and the embeds in. So I'm going to show you the process and how I make those. Um, these little, let's see, these little curves and all these little points tend to get air bubbles. So I'm going to give it a little mist. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol and just a little bottle that I picked up at Walmart but it's got a really good fine mist real fine so I'm just going to give it a, a light mist and um, we're going to pour a base coat first so if because if I don't pour I'm just wanting to pour just enough to reach up over the top of the indentures. If I don't, then we're going to end up with little holes and it, the stones are just too heavy. They won't hold up right. So we're just going to pour. And I'm using, this is just a one-to-one. -one. There's a hair in it. Yes, lovely. I don't want very much. I just want enough down there to cover up the letters, the symbols. Oops, I come up fast. See another hair. I have two very hairy dogs in this house. I got a little more in here than I wanted, so we're going to pull a little bit out. I wear a hat while I'm doing this so I don't get my hair in it, but the collie fur and the retriever fur, yeah, flies through the house. Let's see, I can already see like a little bitty air bubble right there that got stuck in it. Nope. Oh. Most of them will work up, but if they don't, I'm going to have to go around and kind of lift them up. And another hair. Good gobbly goo. So. I should... Where in the heck is all these little hairs coming from? Switch hands so you can see what I'm doing. I swear it must have been in this cup when I mixed it up. My goodness. I have never had this much trouble, my goodness. So it's winter time here and I've got the furnace running. I'm in a cold state. I'm in northern Indiana, like right on the border of Michigan. And so it gets really cold here and the air is so dry that static is just incredible. And these plastic cups and the silicone molds are like a magnet for hair. So I'm guessing that the dog come running in here earlier to tell me she had to go potty. I'm guessing that's her fur come flying through. But
Here we go. This cup had to have, oh my goodness. I got so much going on here now. I don't know if I even want to, oh, see. I don't, I don't want, I don't know if I want to share this video. I want no one knowing, oh my goodness, all this hair. I think there's another one on here. Yep. It's like all... I'm going to have to move these cups. They're like... My, my stack of cups are like right at the entranceway to the door coming into the room. And I'm guessing I'm going to have to move them. So, but in any case, that's all we want is just a base coat. So let's give it a little tilt around. See if we got enough in there. So I think we can add a little more. And you don't want to add too much because some of the stones... Are, you know, they're, they're not tiny. They're small, but they're not tiny. And I have to save room for the stones that I'm going to put in there. So we just want to make sure that all the letters are covered up. So looks good. All right. So I'm going to, uh, Let's give it a little burp. So when you're baking a cake and you want to get the top flat, you burp the pan. You pick it up and you tap it down on the counter and it raises all the air bubbles so that your cake isn't rounded. It stays flat. This is the same thing. We're burping the baby. So see if we can't loosen some up. And then you can just take some alcohol, go over the top again and pop the rest of the bubbles. Okay, I'm going to put this on my uh, heat mat and be back in two hours. I'll probably check on it in about 20 minutes to see if I... Doggone if I didn't find another. Um, I check on it in, in about 20, 30 minutes and see if any air bubbles have come up that I need to address and um yeah but i'll be back in about two hours and show you the next step and i'm back so it's almost it's just about perfect so i dropped a couple stones in there to see and what we're using is called unikite and in spirituality beliefs, it's it's uh, really considered a crystal because it it's believed to have healing powers to it. Um, it's a but it's actually a true stone. So it's it's made up. Unikite is made up of multiple stones actually, but um, in spirituality beliefs, it's it's used to harmonize emotions and bring a sense of well-being so i personally love love this stone so it just feels good so okay what we're gonna do then is just oh i've taken my gloves off just for doing this they're sitting right next to me and as soon as i go to mess with the resin i'll be putting them right back on i yeah you definitely want gloves on when messing with resin but when I'm using like fine little glitters and this thing, I can't do it with the gloves. I just cannot. So I'm just going to drop them in and see what we got. So it's not all the way cured. Like it's still sticky. But 
it's it's really soft and it's just perfect this way if you get it too hard if i let it go too long then it, it just i want the i want the stones to sink just a bit so that it doesn't look like they're completely divided by layers you know so and i've already gotten the resin mixed up and it's sitting there degassing uh, here's a little trick too um I have to hunt for it in my Amazon but what I'm using because I'm in a cold state like it's it gets really cold here and I have a hard time keeping the resin warm in the winter and you definitely want to keep the resin above 75 right around 75 to 80 degrees Otherwise, you're going to get micro bubbles like crazy, and you're just not going to be able to get rid of them. So, my solution was I got for 20 bucks on Amazon, I bought this seeding mat, you know, like for planting seeds. So, in the springtime, it's too cold out there to plant anything yet because the ground is still frozen. But right around February, I start my tomato seeds and my eggplants and my peppers and I put the seeding mat underneath the trays that, that I start my seeds in and it keeps the soil warm out on that front porch because it's cold. So the seeding mat stays at right about 80 degrees which is just perfect for the resin and it looks a lot like the mats that we use to get everything cured quicker, right? Looks a lot like that. But there's no adjustment, there's no nothing on it. It just keeps it at 80 degrees, which is just about perfect for resin. So that's what I've been using for about six months now. And it's just been a total game changer because I don't get those little micro bubbles anymore. So. Now this is 99% pure copper. It's reclaimed copper wire. So it's had a ton of energy surging through it. But, which I personally like. Because my personal belief is everything holds energy. So And I just, I started doing this because I thought that copper might intensify the energies of the stones. So that's why I started doing it. And I just, I just love these runes. But this is why we had to pour that first layer thin like you know you couldn't get you can't get too much because you want to have room for your stones and these ones are actually smaller than a lot of the other ones that I have like the malachite stones I have are almost borderline too big but they're so pretty and the, they really are pretty so Okay, I think Let's see if I have any bald spots. It looks pretty good. Now, I like glitter, but I don't like to see glitter. so this is this is ultra fine glitter, but I am just gonna give it a light like I just want to see an occasional flash. I don't want to see a bunch of glitter taken away from the beauty of the everything else that I got going on. I just want a little flash. So I'm just going to pepper it in there. And it'll be just enough. So 
Okay. Let me get my gloves back on. Let me see. see, my gloves were sticky from mixing up the resin. And there was like no way I was holding on to glitter and sprinkling it like that with these gloves on. Just no way that was happening. <laughs> there was, uh, it just made a big old mess. So Now I usually have a little syringe that I squirt this in so I don't make a mess because I am sloppy. But I don't have any. I'm out of them. So I will be I will be checking on these constantly because of the way I do it like this. I'm going to have air bubbles rising quite a bit. Like I, I can already see one right here. See it? So about every 10 minutes or so, I call it babysitting. I'm going to have to babysit this and keep coming back. So I don't even bother putting this on the heating mat to, uh, to cure it quick because I want a chance for all the bubbles to come up. So, and it's, it's like a quarter to 11 at night at this point. I'm ready for bed. So I'll babysit this for about a half an hour to an hour and then go climb in bed. This resin cures pretty, it'll be hard. Um, In about 10 hours, it won't be fully cured for 24 hours, but this set's going to Canada, so I, I was staying up late tonight so I can get it get it going. I, uh, I don't mail these out for 48 to 36 hours, so because I don't want anything to happen to them because they're all soft. And it takes about 30 days for them to harden all the way. They're, they're usable within 72 hours. So, you know, I mail out within 36. And I normally have them done ahead of time, but I ran out of these ones. And with Christmas and everything, I'm a little bit behind. So. And there we go. You don't want to overfill them. I would rather underfill it because I dome them anyway. But overfilling them just makes a flipping mess. But a couple of these, I know I did not get enough in. I see another air bubble rising up here. Yeah, we coaxed it up a little bit. So, got a little extra resin in here. So, that's all there is to that. So, I'll sit here and babysit these, and uh, I might top a couple more off, but. Um, Let's pop a few bubbles more. Give it a little mist with some alcohol and pop those bubbles. And then uh, I'll be back. 
Oh, we got really out of focus, didn't we? How did that happen? There you go. Boy, I hope we weren't out of focus the whole time. So, I'm sorry about that. So, alrighty. So, I'm going to close this out right here and uh, I'll be back probably tomorrow and we'll finish it up. So, I'm going to keep babysitting and popping buzzle, bubbles and I'll see you tomorrow. Hi guys, I'm back. So it's been about 18 hours. Um, I got I got busy with other things today. So anyway, we're going to pull these up out of the mold. See how pretty and shiny they are. Yep. So I'm going to hurry up and do this because I don't want to we don't want to spend all day watching me take things out of a mold. Now they still are just a wee bit soft, but that's like perfect. I like painting them a little bit better when they're a little bit soft. I think that the paint holds. Now see, I over poured a little bit there. See I'm stuck. Yeah. But that's okay. All right. So I think what we're going to do first is paint them and then while that first coat dries, I'll flip them over and work on the backs. So, and we still have to I still have to get all this torn off and let's see right now it's soft enough that I can just Cut, cut it off with scissors. But they'll all need trimmed and sanded. And, but I think I'm going to paint them first and show you that process first. And I'll probably not do all of them to save time. I'll show you a couple. And so what I'm using is the Arteza acrylic marker. It's the titanium white. These are my favorite. So, for these especially because they fit down in the grooves. And I'm a little OCD about it, so I have to go through and tip them on their sides and make sure all the edges are done too because it just makes for a more professional outcome. So, and there she is. And see, there's a few little, so I mean, I need to go, when it dries, I'll go back over and do it again. Do the sides. So, I'm going to go ahead and get along and do all of these like this. And uh, probably stop the video to do it because... Y'all do not need to see me sit here forever and ever and do this. So, when it gets to the next part, then I'll turn the video back on and show you what I do next. Alright. Okay, so I got all of them on. That's first coat. So... I'm going to work on the back while those cure up more. And this one has, I don't know, can you see it? There's a little air bubble right here. So I'm going to show you what to do with those. And this is how I take care of air bubbles in anything that I'm making. So, a little razor knife and I just cut that bubble out. UV resin in my little needle tip bottle. Got 
got some air bubbles in it. Wait a sec. This is about the only thing I use a torch on. I, I use a regular little lighter or a long neck lighter or alcohol, but UV resin does not care for alcohol. So, and torch in this isn't melting my mold. It's not going to hurt anything. So, all right. So I'm just going to put that in there and give it a about one minute in the cure and while that's going we'll work on another so these are still pretty soft but I still think that if I if I dome them I'm looking for my little piece of sandpaper and I'm not seeing it um, we'll just grab one of these so I'm just going to scratch the edges up and I would rather have my little piece of sandpaper. But we really only I really only need to get the edges and it's still pretty soft. If I would have gotten to them about 5 hours ago, they would have been hard enough to paint but soft enough that I didn't have to worry about marring up the edge. The UV resin would have stuck plenty well. But if you don't give it a little scratch, then it's it's going to separate. I mean, it's going it'll either fish eye because it's a gloss or it just won't stick. You'll be able to pick it right off. So, you definitely want to scratch up the edges a little bit and sand them down. And I normal normally Go around and trim them like that. Okay. That one's ready for doming. So here's I made the little air bubble disappear. So let's scratch it up a little bit. And I'm using the hard type Let's Resin UV Resin. And for these, I use a toothpick because I get the edges perfect that way. I don't use a brush for this. I mean, you're wanting to get the resin to the edge but not spilling over. But it seriously makes all the difference in the world. A little bit more. So, it's like putting a water drop on newsprint. It just magnifies it. So, when you dome it up like this, it just. Here, let's see if the camera will pick up the difference. I guess not. It's really hard to tell on camera. So, okay. So, the air bubble completely gone all right so we'll cure that up and I'm going to go ahead and go through and get all the rest of them done and I can't think if there's anything else and if there's something else I need to show you I'll pop on but I gotta get this order done it's going to Canada I gotta get it done and 
I want to get it done and in the mail tomorrow for them. So, okay, so that's the process. And uh, I'll come back when I get them all done and show you the end product. Okay, I'm back. So, they're all done. I'm going to leave them sit here overnight to cure, to get harder. I mean, they're plenty. They're, they're, they're dry, but they're not as hard. So in about 30 days, they'll be rock hard. But the only thing left is tomorrow I'll polish them all up. And I do want to give them another 8 to 10 hours to harden more before I polish them. But And I'm just going to take um, a micro cloth to, to them and make sure all my fingerprints are off. But there we go. See if we can put, see some of that glitter we put in it. You really don't see it unless you move it around and then you catch color. Super shiny, super pretty. So there we go. There's the process of the runes. So catch you guys later. Bye.